What is going on, mere mortals? My name is John Solo, and if you've always wanted to learn more about Greek mythology but don't have the attention span to sit through a 20-minute breakdown on a niche god you've never heard of, then this is the video for you. I've got 10 different shorts on a variety of mythological subjects coming up. Hades, Medusa, Hercules, and more. You can basically think of this as 10 TikToks combined into one, but you don't even have to swipe up to get to the next one. In other words, if you've always wanted to be like one of the blobs from Wally, I'm about to make your dreams come true. Hades, the Greek god of the dead, had three encounters with his nephew Heracles and left embarrassed every time. The most famous encounter is when Heracles traveled to the underworld to capture Cerberus, the goodest boy in all of Greek myth, for his twelfth and final labor. Not wanting his best bud to get hurt, Hades told his nephew that he could only take Cerberus if he could subdue him without using any weapons, a feat the god thought would be impossible. But clever Heracles used the impenetrable lion skin he wore as a makeshift muzzle and wrestled Cerberus until he was worn out. On another occasion, Hades came to the surface to collect the soul of Queen Alcestis who agreed to die in place of her husband, King Admetus. But Heracles didn't like the idea of this happy couple's love being cut short and wrestled Hades into submission, just like he did his dog. In some versions of this story, Hades is replaced by his attendant, Thanatos, who personifies death itself. The third case is the weirdest though, when Heracles attacks the city of Pylos after its king refuses to purify him of his sins, Hades arrives to either collect the dead from the battlefield or defend the city depending on the version. Either way, when Heracles sees his uncle, he shoots him in the shoulder with an arrow, and Hades retreats to Olympus, where Apollo heals his wound. It's hard to believe it, but Hades, the Greek god of the dead, had three encounters with his nephew Heracles and left embarrassed every time. Did you know that Zeus had a werewolf cult? In the ancient Greek city of Arcadia, on the slopes of Mount Lycaon, worshippers of Zeus Lycaos, Zeus the wolf, would conduct a ritual in his honor, a ritual that supposedly involved cannibalism and human sacrifice. Inspired by the well-known myth where King Lycaon kills his own son, Nictimus, and tries to trick Zeus into eating his flesh, only to be found out and transformed into a wolf, the ritual attendants would gather once every nine years in the dead of night and make their sacrifice consisting of a human volunteer and an animal, and after the deed was done, a portion of the volunteer's intestine would be mixed with the animal's entrails. The cult members would then each take a morsel of meat, and whoever wound up eating the human flesh was transformed into a wolf. The kicker is they would be stuck in their wolf form for nine years, and the only way to be transformed back would be to abstain from eating human flesh that entire time. Not an easy task for a wolf. Why do we have soulmates and what is love? Well, according to the Greek playwright Aristophanes, there were originally three kinds of human beings. The children of the moon were male and female in one body, the sun's children were two males in one bod, and the earth's were two females in one bod. With two united minds and eight strong limbs each, they planned to overthrow the gods and live in heaven themselves. But Zeus, wanting to end this rebellion before it started, sliced every couple into two, had Apollo smoothen them out and add belly buttons as an eternal reminder of their failure and made it possible for them to reproduce as we do now. Distraught by their sudden separation, each person sought to become one with their other half again, but they couldn't share a body anymore. Having been whole all their lives, they refused to do anything apart and started dying because of it. So Zeus reshaped their bodies again, making becoming physically one temporarily possible. Now it's the inborn fate of every person to seek wholeness in another. Those who were once a man and woman desire the other gender, and those who descended from a combo of the same gender seek to unite with the same gender. They are soulmates, and this pursuit is love. The true story of Hercules' death might leave you traumatized. When Hercules was traveling with his new bride Dianyra, they came across a flooded river and the centaur Nessus offered to carry Dianyra across while Hercules swam in front of them. Only when Hercules got to the shore, he saw that Nessus had turned around and tried running off with his wife. So the hero took out one of his poisoned arrows and sent it ripping through Nessus's chest. Refusing to die unavenged, Nessus told Dianyra that she could use his bloody shirt to cast a love spell on Hercules if he ever got bored with her. 
and years later, she gave it a try without realizing the shirt had also absorbed the poison from her husband's arrows. And so the moment Hercules was tricked into putting the shirt on, his body cried out in pain. The poison entered his bloodstream, causing it to boil and hiss, and the tunic grafted itself to his skin. So the only way to get it off was by ripping off his own flesh. Left with no other option, the immortal Heracles made a funeral pyre to burn away his physical form. And soon after, his spirit was welcomed to Olympus. Is Medusa a villain or victim? Before she became the most fearsome of three Gorgon sisters, Medusa was a mortal who lived in service of Athena. As one of her priestesses, Medusa took a vow of celibacy, which was broken when Poseidon, Athena's old rival, forced himself on Medusa right on the steps of Athena's temple. For breaking her vow, Athena turned Medusa's hair into snakes, made her skin green and scaly, and caused her to petrify anyone she locked eyes with which wouldn't be many after she was exiled to a faraway island. Medusa was enraged by her punishment and killed anyone who dared seek her out for over 1,000 years, until she was decapitated by Perseus. Some think Medusa's serpentine form was a curse because she ended the lives of anyone she saw, making it impossible for her to marry or be a priestess. This led to her being viewed as a monster for millennia. Others see the transformation as a gift because Medusa finally had the power to defend herself from those like Poseidon who would otherwise abuse her. Did you know that Medusa had babies? Mere moments after Perseus cut her big, ugly head off, her two children by Poseidon exploded out of her neck stump. One of them was Chrysaor, who went on to father the three-headed giant Geryon, whom Heracles killed while completing his tenth labor. The other was the famous winged horse Pegasus. In myth, he assisted the hero Bellerophon in slaying the Chimera, a fire-breathing lion-goat snake hybrid. By flying just out of range of the Chimera's attacks, Bellerophon was able to weaken it with his bow and arrows before brutally killing it with a spear down the throat. It was an epic battle, and finding that his balls had grown ten times the size, Bellerophon decided to ride Pegasus directly to Mount Olympus, an arrogant move that Zeus punished him for by sending a gadfly to bite Pegasus. This caused the horse to buck Bellerophon off, sending him crash landing into the Earth's surface, dead. Meanwhile, Pegasus was warmly welcomed into Zeus's home and given a constellation to honor him. What a good boy. In Disney's Hercules, we see Zeus get immobilized by the Titans attacking Olympus. But did you know this actually happens in ancient Greek myth? Only instead of being entombed in fire and ice like the movie shows, he endures something much more painful. When the Earth goddess Gaia sent her youngest and most monstrous son, Typhon, to slaughter the Olympians as punishment for their treatment of the Titans, literally all of the gods fled to Egypt in fear beside Zeus and sometimes Athena. Left to defend his kingdom alone, Zeus fought as hard as he could against the Brobding Nagdian beast, but Typhon overpowered the king of Olympus and tore out his sinews, leaving him limp and nearly lifeless on the ground. It wasn't until the god Pan stole back Zeus' strength that he could fight again and ultimately defeat Typhon, after which he chained the monster underneath Mount Etna, where he was never heard from again, although he was known to cause the occasional disturbance. In Disney's Hercules, Philatites claims to be a great trainer of heroes, having brought up the best yusses to have ever lived, but in ancient Greek myth, this role actually belonged to Chiron. Instead of being a satyr, Chiron was a centaur who mentored heroes like Odysseus, Perseus, and Theseus. He was also the one who taught Jason how to sail, and he taught Asclepius everything he knew about medicine, which ultimately led to the boy being made the god of the healing arts. His relationship with Achilles is my favorite, though. After hosting the wedding of Achilles' parents, he received custody of him when the couple split up, and he raised Achilles to be a master of medicine, music, archery, hunting, gymnastics, and prophecy. So who's the real Philatites? Instead of being a trainer to heroes, he was a hero himself, a highly skilled archer who fought in the Trojan War. And get this, his only connection to Hercules, or Heracles, is that he lit the funeral pyre that killed him when he was poisoned with Hydra's blood. 
In Disney's Hercules, the Lord of the Underworld, Hades, has two minions who assist him with his evil schemes, pain and panic, but his underworld entourage in Greek mythology is a lot more intimidating than these two. For starters, there was Thanatos. He personifies death itself, and according to some poets, grants a peaceful, painless transition from the mortal plane to the spiritual one. The female death spirits, called Kyries, were not so kind. They were the goddesses of violent death, and they would watch over battles like vultures waiting to sink their teeth and talons into the men fighting below. The Kyries are comparable to the Arinyes or Furies, but these three goddesses of retribution weren't so fixated on consuming human flesh as they were punishing those who went against the natural order by committing murder and offenses against the gods. Charon and Cerberus deserve some spotlight as well. If it weren't for the boatman, deceased souls would have no way to cross the rivers Acheron and Styx to the land of the dead. And if it weren't for Cerberus, those lost souls may try to return to the land of the living. Every time Hades shows up in a movie or series, he's playing the big bad wannabe King of Olympus. But did you know there's not a single myth, play, or poem where Hades tries to dethrone Zeus? I'll tell you who did though. Hera. See, after Zeus's 400th affair, Hera wanted her husband taken down a peg and used powerful magic to knock him unconscious. Then she, Poseidon, and even Athena chained him to his bed. This is as far as their plan got, though, because a sea nymph, Thetis, summoned one of the hundred armed Hecatonchires, who Zeus had previously freed from Tartarus during the war with the Titans. The Hecatonchires kind of owed him for that, and so rushed to Olympus to break Zeus out of his chains. As you would expect, Zeus punished every Olympian involved Involved, but he saved the worst for Hera, who he hung from the sky on golden chains with anvils attached to her feet and forced her to stare into the abyss until she vowed to never betray him again. That is why Hera always takes her anger out on Zeus's babies and baby mamas instead of him the more you know. And with that comes the end of this compilation. I want to thank you all for tuning into this episode and let you know that I am currently working on a giant episode of Messed Up Origins that's set for upload next week. And when you see what it is, I think you're going to be feeling peachy. I'll see you again tomorrow with yet another short and next week with one of our most requested episodes to date. Until then, my name is John Solo and remember, John shot first.